Okay, now we're going to talk about BCP, and BCP is my favorite utility for working with text files, for importing and exporting text files in SQL Server, because it's just so incredibly fast, and it's actually pretty versatile too. So BCP stands for Bulk Copy Program, and it has been around forever. I mean, as long as I've been in databases, we've had BCP. And like T-SQL's Bulk Import Command, it's highly specialized. All it does is pull data from the database and put it into text files, or take text files and put them in the database. That's the main difference between bulk insert and BCP, is BCP can go both directions. And it's a DOS command, so it's really, really fast. As a matter of fact, it's so fast, I've even seen it beat SSIS for some flat file inserts because it just doesn't have the overhead that a .NET program has, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and look at BCP. It's a little daunting at first until you understand what's going on, but really it's not that bad. Let's go take a look. Okay, so here we are in our VM, and we're in Management Studio now, but we're not going to stay there. I'm going to open up PowerShell. Now, PowerShell has nothing to do with this. This is just the command window that was open. I'm actually going to switch to DOS. There we go. So now, even though I'm in a PowerShell window, I'm actually in DOS. Now, I can type BCP and get some help on it, and these are all of the flags that I can use with BCP. And let's just discuss a couple of them real quick so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, minus S is the server name, so you can connect to a foreign server. Minus Big T is a trusted connection, so you can use your Windows account. And as long as we're talking about that, Big U is username and big P is password. So if you had a SQL account instead, then you could connect that way. Last row is minus big L, which is preceded by uh, minus F, if I can find it. There it is, minus big F for first row. And you can do, and you can use that to snipe specific rows that you want. So if I only want the first 50 rows of the first 500,000 rows, I can put minus F1 and minus L 500,000. So that's, that's very handy. Uh, minus E for error file. So you can, any errors that you get, you can push those out to a separate file so you can look at them later. Remember the bulk insert command that we used in T-SQL in the, in the last demo? Well, we have row terminators here too. And here's the field terminator, minus T, where we specified the pipe as our field terminator before. So you can see there are a lot of options in here. And batch size. So how many rows are you going to push through at a time? So now that we got those preliminaries out of the way, let's go ahead and write our first BCP uh, insert statement. And let's go ahead and take data out of uh, SQL and put it into a text file. So you start off with BCP. Now, you need to specify the database, the schema, and the table. So we're just going to say fooddatabase.dbo.customer. Now we need to specify a direction. In this case, it's going to be out, and it doesn't have to be a capital out. I just like to, I always capitalize the direction in my BCP line, so it makes it easier for me to, to see. I don't have to parse through a bunch of stuff. I can see which direction it's going. Now, how do you decide which direction it's going? It's always from the point of view of the database. So if you're standing in the database, kind of, let's kind of virtualize this for a second, right? If you're standing in the database, you're, take, you're pushing data out to a file. Well, later on, we're going to push data into the database from a file. So the direction is always the direction from the viewpoint of the database. So I'm going to BCP this table out, and now I just need to give it a, a file location. There we go, and we'll call it customer current.txt. There we go. Now I just need to specify a couple of these guys up here. I need to tell it how I'm going to connect. We'll use a minus T for a trusted connection. Minus T. And, whoops, that's a big T. Sorry about that. Minus big T. And for this one, I'm going to use minus N, which means I'm going to go ahead and change this. Because uh, I've changed my mind. I'll say customer current. dash n. There we go. Now, what dash n means is it means copy the data out in native mode. And the way this works is SQL stores the data in a format that's not necessarily readable to us, right? 
and when you copy it out in native mode it leaves it in that format in the text file. So if you were to open up that text file you wouldn't really be able to read anything in there. It'd be a bunch of gibberish. But SQL knows exactly what it is. And when you've got really large text files, I mean really large, like 500 million, stuff like that, you can cut down on some time by not having to convert it to ASCII. So by leaving that character conversion out, you can make it a lot faster. So I'm going to show you the native mode first, and then I'll go back and show you how to do it in character mode. So let's go through this again one more time. BCP, that's just the name of the program that you're going to, that you're going to use. And now you're just going to start passing it parameters. You give it the fully qualified name of the table. And since we didn't pass it a server name, then it's going to use the local server. If I had used uh, minus S, then I could just pass it in a foreign server name. And then I could give it the database, the, the schema, and the, and the table after that. Now I need to pick a direction. In this case, we're going out to a text file. And give it the text file path. Now I always do minus N here when I use native mode because I, you, you have to have some kind of convention to know exactly how you need to import it again. Because if this file sits out there for a couple months, and if it's a, very, if it's a really large file, you're not gonna be able to open it up and see. So I like to include that information in the text file name. So when I go to re-import it in a couple months, I know what I'm doing. And then minus T, minus big T, I should say, is the, uh, is the trusted connection. And then minus N, is going to be for native mode. And these parameters over here don't really take an order. You can put those in any order. These guys have to be in order. You have to have the, the table, the direction, and then the location, and then everything else. So if I wanted to come in here and tack on server name at the end, I could do that. These guys are completely unordered. Now I hit enter, and look how fast that's copying. Every line represents a thousand rows, and it's just really screaming. And I've got 20 million rows in this table, and it's creating that text file pretty quickly. Tell you what, though, I'm going to go ahead and pause it, and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, it just finished. That probably took about, I don't know, a minute and a half or so, give or take. So there we go. we got 20 million rows copied out. It tells you the size of the average size of the row, and it tells you how many rows per second it did. Now, let's go ahead and do character mode. I'm not going to run this again because there's really no need, right? You're just going to see the exact same thing again. So we're just going to talk about it from here on out. So for character mode, I put minus small c, and that means character mode, which automatically means I need to put a c in there so that I know it's in character mode. And now I need to put my field terminator, which is going to be minus small t, and the field terminator is going to be inside double quotes with no space between the quotes and the T. So I'm using the pipe again, and I'm putting it in quotes. So uh, I'm not doing anything different here. All I'm doing is I'm saying specify character mode and use this as a field terminator. And that's it. Now if I were to hit enter, you'd see the same thing that you saw before. Now I can also import data. So let's say that I just used this command to export the data. And I can, I can zip up my file and send it to another server and then expand the file and then import it on the other side. That's what makes BCP so cool is it's actually fairly versatile like that. And, and there are even some third-party utilities where you can even zip it in line and you don't have to zip it after it's done. It'll zip it while it's writing the file. So with BCP being so low-tech, right, I mean, it's just a command line program that does one thing. It does it really fast and it's really fairly solid. I've had very few problems with BCP in the almost 20 years I've been using it. And the only problems uh, that I've really had with the program itself, there have been a couple bugs in the past, but really comparatively not very many. But the biggest problems I've had have been with the data itself and not with the program. So now if I wanted to put the data back in, oops, I would just say, in. Nothing else changes, except in this case, maybe the server name, maybe the database. But if everything else were the same, then all I have to do is specify in, and once I hit enter, it's going to take all that data and it's going to push it in. Now, in this case, I might want to use a batch size. You remember seeing that batch size parameter? I might want to use a batch size of, say, a million, okay? Because remember, if anything happens or if you need to stop it, you're going to have to roll back that, that 20 million. And that can take a few minutes. 
However, if you just need to roll back a million, then that's much better. Not only that, but uh, at the end of the 20 million, if I import the 20 million as a single batch, then it's going to sit there on 20 million forever, and you're going to think that it's broken. So when I get here, let's say that we were importing, and I get to this last line and it says 20 million, and it's just going to sit there for several minutes, and you're going to think that it's frozen, and you're going to be tempted to hit Control C and get out of there, which is, of course, is probably going to call, cause a rollback. But what it's doing in that case is since you've done all 20 million rows in a single transaction, it is now committing all 20 million of those rows. So it's got to commit that huge transaction. So I don't like to do really, really large tables like that in a single transaction just because of that, because you, you have that big space at the end there where you think it's doing nothing. And I don't like things that look like they're doing nothing. Using a batch size of like a million is going to take a little bit longer because you're going to be committing more but it's a lot more recoverable if something happens and I need to stop the process and it does make more steady progress. If I need to start the, the process up from where I left off, if I do have to kill it, then I can always go in there and see the last row that was copied and then I can use the first row on my import and it'll, it'll go right to that row and start picking up from the next row. So I do have some recourse if I have to do that, but I don't have anything at all if I use one single batch for my import. Not only that, but log space is also a consideration. If I import 20 million rows, or in a lot of cases that I've done 500 million rows from a text file in a single batch, well, that log is just going to get huge. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Even in bulk mode, it's just going to be a big log. So I like to control that kind of thing by just making the batches smaller. You can do what you like, play with it, I think you're going to find that you'll like BCP, even though command line tools, especially really old ones, are kind of out of vogue right now, right? But it's a lovely tool. I think you're going to enjoy it. Always keep it in your back pocket, because even today, I still pull BCP out of my pocket for really large loads like that, when, in, in cases where SIS is just going to be too heavy. So there you go. That's how to import and export data in SQL Server. It's not a complete thesis on the on the topic but it is a really good overview of all of the major players so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video